everyone. This is our Really Dicey podcast. Uh, the purpose of this podcast is really to help game masters or dungeon masters uh, to elevate the level of gaming. Really? I thought it was just for us to sit around and talk about gaming and stuff. Maybe it's both. Oh! <laughs> our topic today is step zero. Step zero. This is our first podcast, so yeah. we're going to start with zero, because that's how you start, right? Zero? Yeah, which happens to be about communication. Exactly. So, what I mean by step zero, or sometimes session zero, is, uh, you know, you have your regular game sessions, and often you'll have a character creation game session when you get together and you make the characters before the game. Yes. And, and, and a lot of times that's the first session. Yes. Well, what I think everybody needs is a session before that. Session zero. And session zero is where everybody talks about what they want in the game. Bertram Russell once said that the biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Mm. Right? So, so uh, this has happened to me several times. You'll start a game, and uh, it just isn't working for some reason. People aren't happy. People are... are, are um, and they can't even explain why they're they're not happy. The game just isn't meeting their expectations. Yes, yeah. and that happens because people have different expectations for the game. Um, I played in a a very good um, space game. It was uh, the Technocracy, Mage of the Ascension, um, where we were all technocrats on a on a void ship. And it was a great game, but it was a really rocky start. Because, as it turns out, the storyteller was envisioning the ship like, like Firefly. Right? It, was, it was a very utilitarian ship. It uh, was really kind of rough around the edges. We really had to work to, you know, make it happen. The rest of us were all thinking we were going to be on the Starship Enterprise. Because okay. we thought, oh, the technocracy, they've got lots of money, they've got lots of resources, they're winning the war, we're going to be on this really, really nice ship. And so we were all really, really disappointed with the ship, and kind of disappointed with the level of greediness in the game, um, and it's because we didn't have a session zero. A session zero is when you would talk about these sort of things and then say, this is what I think the game is going to be about, what do you think the game is going to be about, let's figure out exactly what kind of game we want. Hmm. You know, and um, in a lot of cases, if you're playing a established game, this isn't as necessary. Everybody kind of knows what to expect when they're playing Star Wars or, or, or Star Trek or something. Um, but if you're playing a more open-ended game, uh, it's definitely something that needs to be discussed. Prime example of expectations is how cinematic the game is going to be. Okay. So a game can run either from very cinematic, so it, you know, mirrors what you see on television, to realistic, so it's, you know, it's what happens in the real world. Prime example. Um, what happens when you shoot a car? Right? Yeah. If you're in a cinematic game, it explodes! <laughs> if you're in a realistic game, it leaks. Yeah. Cars do not explode when you shoot them. You know, what happens if, uh, how do you knock somebody out? In a cinematic game, you whack them on the head. Yeah. In the realistic game, you you can't really. There's there's no really good way. If you whack someone in the head, you're just as likely to kill them. Yeah. Chloroform doesn't work that fast. It, it's yeah. There is no really instant knockout in the real world. Yeah. So that's you know how bad is it to be shot? <laughs> <laughs> in a cinematic game, you're like, oh, I'm shot. Well, I better get going. In the real world, oh my god, I've been shot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you so. That's the sort of thing that needs to be talked about beforehand. Yeah. Um, before you start a game, make sure everybody's on the same page. Yeah, I feel like the role of the game master is you kind of want to know what your players expect. Yeah. Um, I personally like to be there when the char when someone's rolling up a character. Yep. Um, I want to talk to them here about their backstory, uh, know what they what they're looking to do with their character exactly. You know. Uh, whether it be just basic adventuring or maybe they want to do like a political scary or some other type of different game. Sure, definitely. Um, uh, it's, it's very important for me to know what my players are expecting so that I know what type of game to run. Like how 
how what do I include? How should I make it? If I'm playing with a bunch of murder hobos, for example, um, which I have played with murder hobos before. Sure, there's nothing wrong with know? that. So, in, in at the table, yeah, <laughs> do not murder people. <laughs> um, so if I knew that you're a bunch of, I have a group of murder hobos, and I I know to, uh, to put out like a really wild, action heavy adventure. Exactly. You know? But I play with groups that are really more interested in about about politics, which is very interesting. I, I had a group where uh, they were playing Middle Earth, mm -hmm. and they're much more concerned about how politics are run in this region than just going out and fighting. They want to know, they realize they see a problem with this region, and they realize that, that fixing it on a political level uh, will solve a lot of it. So that we, so it's a very different game session overall. Oh, sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it's really important that they talk to everyone and right. find out what they want to do, what they want to play. Right, and everybody's got to be up front. All your play, I mean, if you have half the players that want combat and half the players that want politics, you're going to have a... Oh, yeah, he's going to have a horrible time. You're going to have a hard time. And I've had, uh, I've been in another session where the game master has not talked to any, everybody. So everyone is brought in, like, these different characters and everything, and it becomes becomes horrible. I yeah. I was uh, a paladin lawful good paired up with a chaotic evil assassin. Guess, guess how that ended up? Yeah, that's not gonna go well. Yeah, it's not gonna go well. <laughs> that, at all. That's that's gonna end poorly. Exactly, exactly, yeah. and and even though the player apologized, like, hey, I'm sorry. It's like, I, I wasn't even mad at, at the player. I was like, I, I, I understand perfectly. In role playing was makes sense. It's not your fault. It's the game master's fault. You know, you know they should have never paired us together. What was what was that person thinking? Yeah, that you know, the, you know. Yeah, the game master has a lot of responsibility. And his first responsibility is to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, it's one of the reasons I'm uh, always uh, leery of playing uh, horror games at cons. I yeah. love a game of Call of Cthulhu. I love, I love Call of Cthulhu. Um, and I used to play it a lot at cons. Um, but it only takes one person at the table who's not on board to ruin the mood. Yeah. You know, uh, everybody at the table has to be in the proper mood because you, you're never going to tell a game, uh, run a game that's so scary that you force people to be scared. Yeah. You know, no one's going to be scared unless they're willing to allow themselves to be scared. You can't, you can't really have a jump table, a jump scare at your gaming table unless you, you grab people by the ankle underneath the table. You really shouldn't do that. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> you know, you. You could gross people out, but that's not the same thing. You yeah. know, if everybody has to be on board with that sort of game, and horror is so easy to ruin. Yeah, <laughs> I often, you know, I run a lot, a lot of funny games because if someone's not, in, if someone's not on board with the funny, they're just not going to have any fun. They're not going to ruin it for everybody else. True, true. <laughs> but yeah. that my point is that at your own game, I run a Halloween game every year. Everybody knows it's going to be a Halloween game, and before the game starts, you know, you know, in um, beginning of October, you know, I, I start August. I start talking about it. I start saying, I missed a month. September. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I start talking about the game, and I talk to the people and say, okay, what do you want for the horror game? Do you want, do you want silly horror? Do you want survival horror? Do you want cosmic horror? Do you want fantastic horror? What sort of horror do you want? Yeah. And we get we vote on it, and then I, I pick an appropriate game based on what they want. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, I get annoyed sometimes when people don't focus on that and they focus on like, look, like for example, I went to a, a panel once and they talk about different types of game masters and they talk about the game master that has a god complex, the game master that wants to play in the adventure. The, the, and I'm like, that doesn't matter. None of that matters <laughs> because what the Game Master's job really is is to find out what the players want and then supply them this, this story that will fit to their uh, enjoyment and sensibilities. Um, I, 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 if, if the people talk about a Game Master shouldn't make a character in the game and play with the players because it could, it could off-balance things. True, for the most part. But I've been in games where a lot of players don't mind that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, uh, usually it's it's usually for it could be because of comedic effect or adventure. Uh, if the game master is pretty level headed and you know emotionally stable, in my opinion, um, usually that's not a problem. You know, um, if um, it's, I think it's very very important 
that the game masters realize what type of players they're playing with, and if they don't know, let's say there's times where um, well, it's at a convention, right? Yeah, You've never uh, met these people. Yeah, never met these people. You know, like you know, scale it back a bit. Uh, find out what characters they're playing. Um, you don't have to worry about you know uh, wowing them with fireworks and all these other things. Uh, just you kind of have to be kind of be a bit psychological. You have to play the role of psychologist a little bit. And kind of figure out what they want to play and just give them the game that they want. Yeah. You know, do the best you can. Yeah. And if you, if you know that they're sensitive about certain topics, then scale it back. Definitely. Definitely. That's a good time to bring up something else. Uh, I read this um, somewhere. I forgot where. My apologies. Um, they called it the X card. Uh, so the idea is that before the game, you give every player a, uh, a card, be it a, an index card or a playing card or a magic card or something. Some special type of card that they can keep with them. And if the game ever strays in the territory that makes them personally uncomfortable, they can just flash the card. Mm. And then that is a signal for the GM to end that scene, to back out of that scene. Mm. You know? Um, and I think that's a fantastic idea because... Um, I had a group of players, and I was playing with them for a dozen years, and I knew them very well, and I knew each of them had particular areas that they didn't want to game about. You know, um, certain sexual situations or violent situations. And one character, you know, didn't like overtly religious topics. Uh, one character, one player didn't like, uh, didn't like playing children because they felt kind of powerless. So I just okay. didn't tell stories about that, okay. you know? And there are lots of other stories to tell. I just avoided those things. But now, for instance, I'm playing with um, with a lot of new players. Yeah. You know, I, I have, a, I have a, a, a player now who's never played before. And, and it's great. She gets really excited about everything, <laughs> which is awesome. You, you know, you bring up a good point, um, something I wanted to bring up. But I don't know her boundaries. So yeah. if I give her the card, she can tell me. With... You have to know how to deal with new players and experienced players. I think it's totally different. To give you an example about new players, uh, myself, when I first played, and I've told you this story many times before, <laughs> so I remember I, I grew up in the Bronx, and I, uh, I was invited by a friend in Queens to come down and play with his group. Um, don't remember why he invited me, but he knew I liked the D&D cartoons. I never played before, but I was very interested. So I came down, and I played with... A bunch of goths. This is the 80s at the time. So goths in New York City were not, it's different. Like they were, I remember these guys were really like wannabe, wannabe vampires. I'm so surprised we played D&D. &D. Um, I feel like we should have played Vampire the Masquerade. That seemed like something they would have enjoyed more. So I remember playing with them and they had this terrible dungeon master. And I, he didn't care. He didn't really want me there, I felt. But uh, he didn't care about what race I picked. He didn't care what... Uh, what class I picked, and that's a really big mistake. I think you should really care what your characters because it could it totally change your game. Oh, you, have sure. no, you have no clerics in your group. That's a big problem, you know? <laughs> oh, you're all dead. What happened? Yeah. Uh, game Master should force a class on someone. You know, if they want to, if everyone wants to be thieves, cool. You know? I played a game of all thieves. It was fun. Yeah. You know, case the joint. <laughs> but uh, my first character was a Kender thief, and Kenders are really complicated <laughs> races. Yeah, Kenders. <laughs> For those who don't know, in Dragonlance, they're like kleptomaniac halflings, pretty much. Um, they have no no um, self control. They're all impulsive. Yeah, with a lot of manic gnomes yeah. thrown in. <laughs> and uh, no one told me that. I, I picked that, and I try my best to act that out. Um, oh, they must have hated you. <laughs> oh yeah, they did. They did. Goths and a kinder. And, and I, <laughs> and I wish they would say, "Hey, listen, maybe not play this. Why don't you play like a fighter?" Yeah, I'm exactly. Fighter. That's usually what everyone picks their first time. Yeah. I always play the fighter first time. <laughs> You know, so because it's simple. So again, I wish it wasn't for my love for D and I'm glad that that didn't stop me from getting the books later on and everything. Yeah. But I, if it was like maybe I'm like two steps away from really hating the game forever because of my experience with these oh, sure. with yeah. these players and with this game master. Yeah, yeah. Poor expectations. Yeah. So, so our our advice to you, if you're listening, um, I think you heard already. Um, you probably guessed this from listening to us, but <laughs> but uh, it's it sounds silly because it seems like a very simple step. It's like you're really if you're game mastering for the first time, or if you're game mastering with first time with new people, uh, you really gotta sit down and talk to them. You know, you don't want to have 
nothing having a bad session is horrible I, i've been in a few of those where i when a game master's not prepared or um uh, doesn't know what they're doing and this makes yeah. it makes, such yeah. a, makes it such a terrible experience and you don't want to have that happen to you um you know uh communicate with your players step zero it's most important all right take care see you next time Thank you.